in an effort to try to convince myself that I don't need to buy any more games and I should just play what I have and maybe this will help me not purchase any games in the short term. We'll see. Well, <laughs> that didn't really last that long because right now is the end of 2023 and I definitely bought games. Um, I definitely bought a lot of games and I actually completed 20 games this past year, which is quite a lot for me. And I'm going to be ranking them all. So sit back, relax, because it's going to be a long video. First, I just want to give an update to this video that I made exactly a year ago in December 27th, 2022. This video, yeah. I was trying to tell myself I wasn't going to buy any more in order to save money. However, I do have to say I actually didn't spend as much as I thought I would thanks to still following those deals, getting a lot of the games on sale. I think I got maybe two or three games that were full price. And that also includes with like the game subscriptions and stuff. But man, it's just been an amazing year for games and so many incredible games. And especially with me being able to use services like cloud gaming, I've been able to play some really good, beautiful games throughout the year. And so this list that I'm going to go through, I pretty much recommend every game, maybe, maybe not one of them, but pretty much every game on this list I recommend. Um, but before I go into the full list, just some numbers on my backlog. So out of the 20, three of these games I played again that I finished before. So those were things like The Witcher and some Sims games. Five of these games were finally finished from the backlog. So I removed five games from the backlog. 13 games from this list were brand new buys. So yes, the good majority of them were brand new games. Now, I did play a bunch of games that I'm not going to mention in the, this list that I did not complete. So that's things like Baldur's Gates or Deus Ex, um, other games that I still have yet to complete. But those two games in particular were actually added to my backlog. So I'm going to count them as being added to my backlog. However, I have a new rule which I've been sticking to. Once I buy a new game, I have to play it within a short amount of time, i.e. less than a year. So any new game I buy from here on out, I have to play it soon. So at least those I've opened, I've played them, but they count as my backlog. So what is my net backlog number? I have negative three. So I was able to decrease my backlog by three games. And I want to continue that momentum going forward, just decreasing my backlog, even if I buy new games, just trying not to add any more to my backlog in total. So yes, I didn't live up to the promise of not buying any new games as I finished a lot of new ones. It's been an amazing year. Uh, but my next goal for 2024 is to actually at least open up and start the games, like run the file for all the games in my backlog. So I have at least 15 to 20 games. So we'll see how much I get done. Um, some of those I'm probably never gonna finish and they might even be really bad, really bad games. But hey, like, how can I judge without opening it up myself? So we're, we're gonna try to do that. <laughs> um, we're going in here. I I'm gonna show my Steam library. Um, and this definitely doesn't help the Steam Winter Sale does not help, does not help my my goals right now of not not adding to my backlog. So I'm, I'm going to avoid opening what's there. So for without further ado, let's rank from number 20. So this is last on the list. And this is pretty much the only game I really wouldn't recommend. It is The Sims Jungle Adventures. Let me see if it shows up here. Right now it's on sale for $12. I forgot how much I bought it for. Um, I think I did 
two streams of this. So all these games on my list, I have played on my channel and I have streams in the playlist channel, playlist tab on my channel here. Yeah, this one, oh, I never want to play it again, especially coming from Sims 3 and playing world adventures where you get three countries to explore. This one only comes with one, I guess, country or culture to explore. And it was very lackluster. Things seemed like broken for me, or I don't know if it just took longer to get the items I needed. Um, yeah, there were definitely, I don't know. If you want to see bad gameplay, just, yeah, it's on my playlist, but I don't recommend this one. This one is number 20 on my list, specifically Jungle Adventures for The Sims 4, so expansion pack. The number 19, this is where I start getting into, eh, maybe I'll recommend it, Detroit Become Human. So this one, Detroit Become Human is a game that I've wanted to play for a while. Um, I have to say the voice acting for most of the characters like Brian Descartes and others are really good. Um, the it, It's a beautiful game with great graphics and I got it on sale. I finished it. Um, the story could be better, uh, but I, I would still recommend it, I guess, on sale. And it recently is available on cloud gaming through Boosteroid, so I'm able to play it without it stuttering or anything. So it was, it was really cool to see through that. But since there's so many good games on this list, this one, this one is near the bottom that I, I've played. But yeah, I, I would probably recommend it. Um, the next one, Stray. So technically this one, I completed a little bit before the year mark, but I'm including it in here. There's a lot of games named Stray here, I just realized in Steam, but I'm talking about the cat one. The cat one that came out in July 2022, last year. So this is such a cute game. It was enjoyable to play. However, it's near the bottom of my list at number 18 because it is just too short for how much it is. Right now, I think it is on sale, but when I bought it, I bought it for full price, and I feel like it wasn't worth the full price. It was just way too short. Um, I feel like they could have maybe made more of a story, made it longer somehow, but overall, it was, it was enjoyable to play. It was just... Yeah, a little bit lacking on the content and the length for me. All right, I'm probably gonna lose my count soon because I'm kind of recording this in one take. So we'll see how it goes. The next one on the list, I think this is number 17, is Venba. This is a really cool indie story. This one's very short as well. Um, you could play it in one sitting, but um, it's half the price of Stray, so that's why I put it above. And the story is so heartwarming. It made me cry, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought the gameplay was unique. Um, it was a little rudimentary. There's not really complicated gameplay, but um, it, it kept my attention. And I really liked the immigrant story because I myself can relate to that as a child of immigrants. And so it's when streaming this, I was able to share some of my own story with viewers as well. And yeah, I thought it was a fun gameplay. All right, let's keep moving. Next on the list is unpacking. And yes, I am just typing these out individually into my Steam, into my Steam program. So unpacking was super cute. Um, it's got a really good hidden story there as well. Uh, I liked the length of it, I thought it was a good length. Um, but yeah, I would recommend this. It's very different from any game I've ever played. It's more just like supposed to be a calming, uh, clicking and moving game. No rushing or anything, but you get to uncover a story. And so this one is on sale too for, for half off, but I like that one. Next up on the list, it might be number 15 or 16 is to the moon this one is a beloved indie and i am contemplating getting the sequel to it um i forgot what it was called i think it's called finding Par 
Paradise, so it looks like it's on sale. Hmm. Hmm. I really... That's making me think maybe I should should get that one, but um, I'll wait on that. I still have so many games that are on my list to play right now, but I finally got to To the Moon. To the Moon was one of those games. This is the first game on my list that was on the backlist. This I had the um, this I had on my Steam library for years, and I just never got around to playing it. And I'm glad I finally did, and I got to share it on stream as well. I cried on stream. Um, it made me laugh. It made me cry, and I absolutely adore games that can do both really well. And so um, it's nothing too too graphics intense or anything. But um, I really loved giving the characters their own different voices as well and just playing around, um, talking different voices as I went through the game. So it was really enjoyable to play. All right, next on the list, GTA V. Um, this is a little bit, maybe a little bit controversial. Grand Theft Auto V. It is kind of low on the list. Um, they're showing a lot of the online gameplay, which I haven't done yet. Uh, but I played the main story. Um, it was good, but I honestly was a little underwhelmed. Um, I think the storyline is a little bit lacking compared to a lot of the games on this list. Um, the storyline is a little bit, I guess, I don't know, a little bit vapid for me. I am excited for GTA 6, which is coming out. I don't know if I'm going to buy it at release or not. Um, I have to see if these kinds of games are for me because um, this kind of, I don't know, gameplay with the characters, I, I it's hard for me to root for any of the characters in this game and I don't want to say too much without giving too many spoilers. But other than that, the gameplay was amazing. Um, I uh, was blown away. This is one of my first Rockstar games that I played and I'm blown away by how much Rockstar is able to fit with their gameplay. You could you could ride a helicopter, go on a boat, of course, race cars, do all these things. There's so much gameplay in these games. And um, yeah, so that's what made it fun. But I put it low on the list because the storyline, to me, kind of lacking. Okay, moving on. This is, I don't even know what number we are on. Probably number, like, are we at number 12 or 11 yet? Half-Life 2. Half-Life 2. This one is a little bit lower on the list than I was expecting it to be because it was hyped up so much. So I played Half-Life 1 for the first time this year and it's gonna be later in the list. You'll see where, but I was blown away by Half-Life 1. I absolutely loved it. Everybody recommended I play Half-Life 2. A bunch of people said it was even better. Um, I really enjoyed Half-Life 2. I would recommend it, but I think I came away a little bit underwhelmed. Um, the story was, I feel like I was able to poke a lot more holes in the story, probably because it is, I think it is kind of a longer game and more stuff in it than Half-Life 1. But at the same time, even though it seems like there's more stuff and um, I had a lot of fun in some parts, a lot of the gameplay too was very repetitive and lacking for me. I felt almost like bored in some places, whereas like I was expecting with compare right after playing Half-Life 1, I felt like things were like a little bit too slow for me. But overall, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the new characters and um, all the voice acting and stuff. And, and I just um, am excited to play even more Half-Life. I have on my list um, some more of the expansions that I want to play because Valve released this game. Um, first they released half, they released Half-Life 1 for free for their 25th anniversary or yes, I think it's like 25th anniversary. And then they released a whole pack. So this is one of my new buys, but it was, it was a cheap buy. So I'm very happy with my purchase for sure. Okay. So next on the list. This is another backlog that I was able to knock out. Sleeping Dogs, and now it's $3. It, I think it's totally worth it for $3. However, it is one of the more violent games I have played. Um, probably even more violent than GTA, the GTA games. Um, 
I feel like, yeah, so viewer discretion is advised for sure, guys, because it's playing a lot of the violent previews already. Um, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this game and the story. Um, I think I might have shed a tear or two. And there's karaoke. There's a lot of different gameplay, um, not as much as GTA 5, but because I like the story better, um, this goes higher than GTA 5. So um, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I should have said viewer discretion advice for some of these previews. That's um, the only thing I guess I have a gripe about. Um, a lot of the side quests were kind of like, read me the wrong way how violent they were and how they had nothing to do with the storyline and same goes for gta 5 has that too but i guess i wasn't expecting that so i would recommend this game but if you're like me and don't care for unnecessary violence sometimes um just like stay away from those side quests that just like make you beat up a bunch a horde of people for no reason but it was a really good story it really captivated me and yeah, I I want to see more games like this for sure. And also there were the voice acting was amazing. You have some of the biggest names in Hollywood acting in this game. Lucy Liu, Emma Stone, a bunch of others. And it also has its funny parts. So it's a game that can make me laugh and make me sad. So those those are the games I tend to to rank a little higher. And so this one was in my backlog for years. Got to knock it out. All right, next up we have Welcome to Elk. I don't really see a lot of people play this one. I came across this game on a whim during my Stadia playthrough trials, and I'm so glad I came across it. It's a short indie game, very story driven, has its humorous moments, and also makes me cry uncontrollably so this is a very special game in my heart even though it doesn't have like as much varied gameplay as others um that i might have played it's just left such a lasting impression on just my life i feel and it was so fun to voice the different characters this was a game i feel like i even go and review my old gameplay because it, it it was one of the most fun games to to play and stream so welcome to elk i highly recommend it um it will make you laugh but have tissues nearby for sure okay next on the list so i think i'm getting toward my top 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. yeah top 10. <laughs> i lost count so i had to count that again top 10 coming at number 10 I went back to oldie but goodie Sims 1, which actually isn't on Steam, so I can't really show you. But let me see if I can find like just like a Sims 1 web page that I could show you or something. Um, so Sims 1 was one of the first games I've ever played. Oh, there's not really any good. Um, yeah, there's not really any good like website for Sims 1, huh? I'm gonna like, hopefully I won't regret this. I'm going to share the gallery. <laughs> and hopefully I won't, why is it not working for me? Okay, let's see. The gallery. All right, so these are just some, I, I went down a nostalgia trip and I wanted to rank this because um, I finally found my old sims one disc um this past year and i ended up also purchasing a few extra expansions that i never owned before like superstar and making magic i did a whole series where i went through the entire expansion packs and i would say i finished this game because i went through pretty much every every different um new thing in the expansions and i also got drew carey to show up at our 
at our party, which I never had done before in all my years of playing The Sims. And yeah, it was so fun to play, so fun to go back down memory lane. And a bunch of you joined on as well during those streams. And we just reminisced about the old times in the early 2000s, over 20 years ago. So that comes in at number 10. And of course, you know, the graphics are dated, things are dated. But I got so excited when I got this game to work on my on my modern computer. So Sims 1 is at number 10. So what's going to be at number 9? Number 9, we have Half-Life 1. And so Half-Life and is it this one? I don't know. This is just the Half-Life Alex. No, I not Half-Life Alex. I don't. Um, that's way out of my budget for now. Half-Life. I think it's just called Half-Life. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no one um, beside it. But this is an incredible game. And it's weird to say that it comes in at number nine this year for me because number nine almost seems too low for it. But again, I just have to repeat myself. There's just been so many amazing games. Um, my boyfriend EPS encouraged me to, to purchase this when it got on sale during the 25th anniversary. And he was like, you should buy it. And then I decided to buy it and play it right away. It wasn't even planned at all for me to touch this game. And I was so pleasantly surprised. I had a ton of fun playing this. It's I feel like it's still not like any game that's been out before it or after it, but it's set the standard for so many games. So uh, while I was playing it, I had so much fun going down like the history books and through the rabbit hole of researching into game development and game history because this game is part of it. And it makes me like nerd out so much about just games in general because this one's set the standard for sure. Half-Life 1 is a masterpiece and yes weird to say it's at number nine but I absolutely freaking adore this game. So what's better than Half-Life 1 this year? Well we'll see. Number 10 is gonna be coming in for me is Zelda Breath of the Wild. It's not on Steam. I played it on Switch of course so I have it uh, here just little previews. I finally finished this game, played it for the first time, and it's my very first Zelda game ever I played. Um, a lot of you joined on for this too. I think I might have gotten most subscribers so far from this series. There's so many Zelda fans. Um, so grateful to the community and how like super nice everyone is for sure. And so amazing game. Um, so fun to play very innovative. It's, I feel like these games are so polished. Um, these new Zelda games are so polished compared to other games that I've been playing where I just kind of um, work through the bugs a lot. And it's, it's just a lot of really cool puzzles and varied gameplay and the physics and mechanics. The world is amazing. Um, I do have a negative though. The, I'm all about storyline. So the reason why this game is not higher up for me is because the storyline is pretty rudimentary and yeah there's not storyline wise it's pretty low on the list compared to many other games I've played um which is okay I mean I, I tend to go for I guess more adult themes and Zelda does sometimes have that but um people have recommended older Zelda games to me for I guess some of better storylines even. So I do have that on my list that I want to try to play more older Zelda games like Ocarina of Time, maybe Majora's Mask, and others as well. But this one, it's still a great game. Um, and it comes in at number eight for me. Okay, next one on the list. Next one coming up is A Plague Tale Requiem. So I played A Plague Tale Innocence first, and that was a great game. Requiem steps it up to a whole nother level. The only thing about this game is like, the story is almost too good that it, yeah, falling crying, of course, but the, there's really nothing else other than fear, terror, sadness. And so if you want a game that you're just gonna be sad all the time, 
this is that game. So there's no break in that. But uh, these games, A Plague Tale, it just really sticks with me. Um, the relationship depicted between Amicia and Hugo is like no other. I never see that in video games. It's very it's very rare and just to have the innocence of such a young child and the juxtaposition between the environment and what's going on in the world. I don't know how they pulled it off, but they did and it's so captivating. Yeah, great story, great gameplay and very unique. I love it. Okay, let's see. What number are we at next? I think that was number eight. So we are at number seven. Number seven comes in Undertale. Undertale is number seven for me. We're getting into these top tens are pretty much games that are like cult favorites for a lot of different people. Um, I tend to play very varied games as you could probably tell right now. I love all different kinds of games and Undertale is no exception to that how, with how unique it is. I really am afraid of even showing anything because it's so it's so easy to spoil this game. So, so easy. So let's step away from the picture up there and just trust that I recommend Undertale to everybody. Um, the only other thing I'll say about it is that, yes, there's some silly, funny parts I've laughed, but I've also cried. And I was, um, I think, that might be a, spoil a little spoiler of itself. I apologize. But I think like that's the only thing I'll say about it. It's a great game. I played the pacifist route and I actually might play the genocide route as well. Um, yeah, but Undertale, recommend it. Okay, now we're coming into the top five. Ooh, top five, number five, Crisis Core. Um, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. This is best played after you played Final Fantasy VII. It is a prequel to Final Fantasy VII and it's amazing. If you love Final Fantasy VII, which I did, um, you'll love this game. It just continues, adds more to the story. The gameplay, I played this on the Nintendo Switch. It was absolutely beautiful. The gameplay is, um... I think it, it is lacking in some things, but it's still fun to play, but it's not as, I think, it doesn't have as much gameplay capability as some of the top games coming out. However, the story I think is amazing. I bawled my eyes out. I cried on this game as well. And it was just really cool to see the characters that I was familiar with in a different light as well. So. Number five, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Going into number four. So this number four is going to be Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Yes, so I like this one better personally than Breath of the Wild, but both were good. This one I like because it added in some more of uh, maybe a little bit of a darker theme. I don't want to give too much away, but um, it also added in some more extra gameplay that kind of like blows your mind. Again, the story is like not as uh, in depth as I'd like it to be, but I think it because of the gameplay and they added a little bit more to the story than Breath of the, the Wild. I, I ranked it higher for sure. And yeah, I think this is one of the most polished games on release I've ever played. Um, people still have found little tiny bugs here and there, but I, I think I'm just blown away by the mechanics this game allows you to do. It basically allows you to build whatever you want to build and the way things lock into place and just work. And you could test all things out and build different things. It's just amazing that kudos to the developers that made that possible because there are just so many places that could go wrong and it just worked. And that's just a little part of the gameplay. There was so much added this game. Ton of fun. I almost played it all through every single day. 
without stopping. And when I do that, I really like, I really, really like the game usually. That tells me it's, it's going to be one of my favorite games. And so, yeah, it is number four. Okay, we're getting into our top three. We're going to go back to Steam for this. Top three, if you've been watching along my channel, you might be able to guess what my top three is. And maybe you could guess and see if you were right in the comments. But my number three game that I played and finished this past year, um, it's not a full game. It's actually an expansion. It is Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. So I already finished Cyberpunk right when it released three years ago um, off stream. It was amazing. I played it on Google Stadia, so didn't really experience any of the bugs or any of the downsides that many, many people experience. But I think this is one of the greatest redemption stories in history. Yes, I was already a fan, but I actually think I like the story of Phantom Liberty better than the story of the main game. I am still, I still like find myself a little bit confused of the main game storyline, but Phantom Liberty, it was funny. I cried. Idris Elba, Alba is amazing. And it was just so fun, so beautiful. And just, yeah, it was just a great time, a great time to play the game and I recommend it to anyone. So that is top three coming in at number three. We have two more to go and we're almost done. Thanks for staying with me. If you've watched till this far, definitely leave a like and thanks for watching along this far. But we have two more left. Okay. Second one coming up. You might have guessed I've alluded to it before. It's Final Fantasy Seven. Final Fantasy VII, the original version. So I've never played Final Fantasy VII, the remake yet. I don't know if I'll play the first one. I have like mixed feelings about that. But this one has been in my backlog for years. And I finally got around to playing it this year because the remake is coming out with their second part. And there's so many trailers out and I don't want to ruin or spoil anything for myself. So I was like, let me just play the dang thing. This is definitely, if not my favorite full stream I did, um, one of my favorites. It's not my favorite game because it's at number two, but it's probably my favorite stream I ever did. Um, it was a ton of fun. It was a long game, but I got to have fun with like mediocre voice acting. I got to have fun with like meeting all the different characters and it definitely made me laugh. It had its silly parts, but yes, it had its gut wrenching wrenching parts too where I cried a ton. And so this game is still such a masterpiece. Now, I do have to say, when I first opened this game, before I streamed it ever, I went to see, I saw the graphics and I was so turned off that I like turned off the game right away. I was like, nope, I noped out of there and I just couldn't continue. And then it sat in my library for probably another two years or more before I played it again. Um, this year. So I was like, let me just try and see with these graphics. And you know what? Like after learning the key bindings, it's very, very weird key bindings. If you play on your PC, I got the hang of it. I recommend this game, any, everybody to play the classic version. I totally recommend you to play it through a console or like the switch or with, um, with a controller. If you're able to, you won't be able to get the mods and stuff, but I played without mods. Like you, if you, if you don't have mods, you'll be fine. I played without mods and it was totally fine. Um, but if you want mods, you could play through PC and there's some mods people might recommend, but just be aware because I've seen some streams where the mods like messed up the game and you couldn't see some cutscenes that were pretty important. Some things were weird. So I stuck to the tried and true, just like what Steam gave. I don't know if this is considered like the original because going on a rant here, but the original was like back on the PS1 and whatnot. But I just stuck with what Steam gave me essentially. Um, I, yeah, I, but I definitely recommend it. 
if you're able to first play it on on like a console i think i'll probably find myself playing this game over again i might even buy it on the switch because i love it so much and yeah this game this game is just so good it really had me going down the rabbit hole again of research when games are really really good for me like this game half-life and all the other games in the top list like i'll especially older games if i really like it i'll go research all about it and so i definitely did that with this game and had to play crisis core right afterwards so love this game at number two okay what's my number one game this game many might not be surprised maybe you will be surprised because i actually didn't play it that much in streams however i have mentioned it as my top before it is the witcher 3. yes the witcher 3 remains at my number one spot um i mentioned it last year as well it was pretty much my top game to play that I've been playing and I played it again. I finished it before. I picked it up again this year. There's been a lot of new updates and just new things added. It's it's a game that is getting old. Yeah, it's like eight years, over eight years old right now. However, I just love that the developers and CD Projekt Red is continuing to improve on it. And there's just still a lot of hype for this game. I love it so much. It's beautiful. The story is the best from any game that I've played. It, that's very subjective because there's a lot of great stories. But this one, you know, it's got its humor. It's made me laugh. And it also, it's got its heartfelt stuff in it. And I think it's a kind of humor that I like. It's a kind of story that I like for sure. And um, yeah, I just love it so much. And I will continue to play it here and there. And we'll see if it continues to be my top game um, for the next year or for years to come. We'll see. Um, we'll see when The Witcher 4 comes out. I also have The Witcher 1 and 2, which I think I want to try to try to play as well. I, I did try to open those up, but they were a little clunky. So we'll, we'll definitely see with that. Okay, so with that, you know, that is my list of, oops, 20 games. And I want to play some ending music as I close out. Close out today. So some end reflections. It's actually been just over a year since I started streaming and posting publicly. And man, what a year it's been. I've discovered great communities, passionate fans, and even joined on some podcasts to talk about our favorite games. And I've been having fun, a ton of fun, and it's pretty cool to see hundreds of people liking my content enough to even subscribe and follow along. So. Thank you to everyone who has watched along the past year. Thank you for those joining on new as well. Even if you're stopping by, passing through, leaving a like, saying hi in the chat. So yeah, I'll continue to stream, having a ton of fun, um, and we'll see what great games will come in 2024. And with that, I will see you guys in the new year. Bye!